My name is Egan, together with me is Naisu. And we are heading in to the Land of Dawn and looking at the lineups, Naisu, so far. You've been mentioning, uh, mentioning this a while ago. Yep. That this is the same concept Pac that AP Bread is doing up against Blacklist International. Yeah, yesterday they had a similar concept with the lineup here. And that is noted. It's Ogwin on the Hylos again. Same revitalized. Then few having this, you know, Faramis available to him. And I know the panelists already mentioned this. Midnight pointed out the purifies here are going to be very difficult for Black International to deal with. And I think you put it well too. Hang on. This is the third version of Blacklist International that we're seeing here. And, you know, that's what a lot of teams do when they have 10 man rosters. Let's take a look at the emblems, though. Yeah, similar to what happened to Falcons' uh, AP Bren during Season 8, Season 10. They also had the 10 man lineup. Even uh, during season, season 8, when Carl PZ was still there. And Blacklist so far, they haven't found their identity. They haven't found their uh, five-man lineup. So yeah. it's really going to be interesting how they go through the process. Similar to TNC, they have to trust the process. It's going to be a slow process so far for Blacklist. Let me ask you this, man. How do you feel about the joy? We saw it, we saw it pop up yesterday. Unfortunately, it didn't get played through that game three at the end of the series yesterday. But do you think like this is actually going to be a good pick for MP the King? Me right now, uh, it, it seems like it's so hard because... If, even if you go to the back line again, there's the few with uh, the Faramis Netherrealm. It's, uh, it's easily going to be countered out. And at the same time, it's not, uh, it has a lot of factors to be able to uh, have a good performance with the Joy. Again, you have to dominate the early game. You have to uh, have a good lead, especially for Blacklist. But with their current lineup, it's really going to be a hard game for MP the King unless they pull it off, especially in the gold lane with Oheb being a Ruby. So Ruby's really going to have a good time up against Super Marco with the Bruno. It's so it's so funny because, you know, even coming to this matchup, we're like, the Filipino sniper is back. Yes. And then he's on a hero that just doesn't even have a gun. Doesn't even have a gun. <laughs> so basically, he's just the Filipino. <laughs> He's a Filipino scythe right now. Glorious Pathway going to be laid down. Delar. There's the penalty zone too on the back side against Exort. Taking a couple shots with the hammer from Flap Teasy. First blood in the hands of Few already. And they're still going to chase him down. Exort gets hit. He's dead. He's Ooh. gone. Couple of hits to the hammer as Flap picks up another kill and stands there menacingly looking at Haji. Feeling like he wants some more here. And they're going to be able to get the objective, put some pressure even on the buff. Oh. Maybe the king. Oh, implosion! Two members right there for the pickings. And even with the objective taken, MP the King, Blacklist International ends up getting two kills. Okay, there's your answer, nice too. Haji wants some more, and I think oh. MP the King wants some more too. Like fine beats gonna be dropped. Won't be able to catch up Kyle TZ, but hey, good response there from Blacklist International. I was wondering why two members of FCAP were even there. I, I think the concept was they wanted to delay MP the King. Especially since they already got two kills and at the same time the turtle. So as much as possible, they want to extend the level gap between the two junglers. But <laughs> don't forget, this is still Haji. Yeah. The KDA machine alongside uh, Oheb, who came back after a week and a two-day break, sitting on the bench for Blacklist. And so far, so good. They found their trade even after FCOP had a very good start. And looking back, Owen with uh, the high loss, uh, the glorious pathway, Casted right on time, as well as the follow-up coming in from Flap TZ. So so far, in terms of clashes, you'd really you'd really lean towards Falcons AP Bren. But yeah. for some reason, Blacklist with with those isolated clashes that they get, it seems like they can always find an answer. That's what they have to do. I mean, if you're looking at the the lineup that they brought to the table, it's gotta be there's gotta be a response from Blacklist International. And, and so far, you know, <laughs> with what FCAP just did, Blacklist International kind of evens out what those last, you know, that last turtle fight ended up being. And so really, eyes are going to be on MP the King. How does he utilize the joy? How does he get farmed up here? And how do they find an answer to deal with the purifies that high loss combination? Part of it might just be displacing themselves. I mean, they have a very fast lineup that they can use. Joy is that hero that, you know, typically you see just kind of zooming around, especially when the electrifying beats are popped. Oh. But even with that, uh, Turtle's going to be up here in about 10 seconds. Uh -oh. going to try to set things up. Haji's going to go in. What? The pull from Few? I don't think they get anything, though. They're just going to set up for this objective. Oh, surprisingly, MP the King's actually the one level ahead prior to Kyle Tizzi reaching level 8. So, so far, uh, MP the King still on the roll with a 101 KDA. A while ago, if you can recall correctly, FCAP got the turtle, but again, the trades coming in from Blacklist was there. They also got the two kills. And this time, a lot of pressure coming in from Haji. I mean, they said it in the panel. It's really going to be a hard setup coming in from the Stigriel. 
Yeah, that's the that's the task at hand here. Delar too on the famous kind of the front line. Haji, look at this, already brought to half health. They're gonna jump in, force the fight. Glorious wow. backplate dropped down. Huge penalty zone though, gonna force them back a little bit further and chasing them down on the pathway. They'll get frozen a little bit further, but Kyle Teasy on the hunt, jumps in with the Lycan Pounce. We'll be able to find one, Haji falls, and they run to the tier two turret. They're gonna get sandwiched in though, as Few still Ew. looking for MP, picks them up with the Ghost Bursters. And that's tough, objective also secured. FCAP getting a big win. How do you play against a Faramis, Hylos, and Terizla combination? I mean, you've seen it yourself. The layering of skills was on point. They didn't cast it, uh, the ultimates, all at the same time. Yeah. It was proper timing, starting things off with a glorious pathway, then a good follow-up with the penalty zone coming in from Flap, connecting onto four. And honestly, the honestly the nether realm coming in from Pew was just a bonus. They didn't even need the yeah. nether realm at that point. It's like an extra layer, you know? We're gonna look at the replay here just in a second. Brontos, my Infinix. Look how this unfolded. This is actually the end after everything you just explained there, Ingan. You know, it's everything was beautiful, and even at this point, they probably could have pushed this a little bit more, but they end up just saying, nah, let's get MP. Let's not make a mistake like we did in those wow. first few minutes of the game. Yeah, yeah. And right now, FCAP really capitalizing on the lead, making sure that all their uh, micro mechanics will translate to mic macro objectives as well, getting a tower onto the top lane. And MP the King, so far, if you're MP the King with the Joy, this is, this is as much as you can do. Just really yeah. try and split push. There's nothing much because you don't want to force a clash. And at the same time, you could go for those isolated pickoffs. But the problem is, Few is always present. He's like a Faramis that's a chip. Wherever exactly. he's needed, he's always there. It's tough because the Faramis has been like a mainstay for some teams for a while. It's always, it was a mainstay and then it became like a niche pick. And now more teams are picking it up with the Hylos. So I'm actually still surprised that, you know, we see the Hylos even slip through because Faramis is kind of in the back of the mind of a lot of teams. But when it pairs up the Hylos, it works so well. Like. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with the Nether Realm? How do you deal with the Revitalize and the Glorious Pathway? Yeah, and I actually agree because uh, we, we've been saying during the draft, well, uh, uh, us, not the panel, backstage, you were saying that there, the Zask was oh. open actually, but Implosion play coming in from Haji. Haji again, gonna get cut off with the Glorious Pathway. Delar pops his own vengeance, jumps back in on the back side. Doesn't have enough tankiness to withstand the firepower from FCAP. And that's just going to be a lost objective again to Blacklist International. They won't be able to deal with FCAP. Now three for three in the Turtles. So, so far, what, wait, wait, Easy Use this retribution to slow down Haji. Are they oh, going to pick him up? Penalty zone again from Flap Teasy, even though he gets frozen. Bridget Glacier dropped down, still putting the pressure on Oheb. MP the King, does he give the call to actually initiate on this? Goes in a little bit from the backside, though. Takes a ton of damage. Tries to run away. That last hit won't be able to get him, but again, the Nether Realm. Keeps them healthy, keeps them together. FCAP just heavily favored right now in every department. And now they're going to force a push onto the middle lane despite the members of Blacklist trying to defend. And uh, the thing that impressed me the most was that was a very long clash. But we saw when the Netherrealm was casted. Yeah. Later, even after the clash ended. So they honestly, they don't need the Netherrealm. That's how much lead they've established. So, so far, FCAP is on the roll right now. At the same time, Blacklist actually tried to do a different thing. They tried to initiate first with the Haji implosion and follow up coming in from the Lar with the Cutter and Inferno. But still, it didn't work. So, this begs me to question what does Blacklist need to do to come back for this game? I think we have to start thinking about it because, you know, Lord's going to be up here in less than a minute. You're down 6,000 gold. You pick up a couple items that you need here, but man, Blacklist and Rasso, I feel like. What do they do? Like the the you would typically say like oh if Oheb again we built up the story of the Filipino sniper is back, but we know how much a gold lane ruby can struggle, especially in times of you need to build up. We saw this happen even for example with Calra yesterday. And how do you get back into this game when you're so reliant? Oh, oh hold on, and this might be another initiation. Look how tanky Ogwin's gonna be. A lot just expended on him, but he's gonna be fine. Didn't even use the revitalize, and that's my point. Going back to it. Who is the one to turn things in their favor for Blacklist International if it's not going to be a traditional marksman, so to speak, here for Ohem? You look across the lineup that they have here, and they, they kind of have to rely on MP the King and Exor uh, to make this work. Ruby is more so grab them, 
pull him so we can freeze him. But look oh. at the penalty zone again from Flap TZ. They're going to force the fight no matter what. Blacklist on the run. Delar will get taken out. Super Marco still on the hunt alongside Kyle TZ. But they're happy with one. They know the Lord is up. We'll see FCAP go ahead and turn the focus. Blacklist, it's going to be hard for them to contest more of this Lord, so I think they're just going to give it up. And uh, looking at the lineup of Blacklist, you'd expect them to dominate the early game. Th that's why they picked up this uh, Ruby, as well as the Thumbs. Because towards the late game, you don't have a natural gold laner. You don't have a marksman. So it's really going to be hard to go, to go for those pushes in the late game and dish out the damage that you need, especially if you have a Faramis and the high loss. So right now, I think the window for Blacklist opportunity to turn things around is, is is really over, honestly. It's more so you gotta get the AO, AOE dream set of your life if you're yes. Blacklist International. And that's gotta be on Haji. You get a multiple member freeze down with Exord, and then you hope from there. Holy Shields are already gonna be popped. Lord's gonna be worked on here in the mid lane. Still MP the King's gonna join the fight. Pops electrifying beast is gonna force the fight here into the base. Glorious Pathway comes down again. There's the Nether Realm we're talking about, but Haji has to flicker out just to save himself from getting hit down by Super Marco. And I think FCAP's not yet done. They have minions onto the middle lane as well as the bottom lane. They're trying to get an hit of their turret. The Delar trying to oh! answer back, but Oheb! Oheb gonna jump in. I'm offended, but he's gotta walk back to the turret. They're not gonna give him a chance. He takes a couple shots as Oheb does get a kill, but Oheb's gone out of the picture. And they still deal with it. It's going to be a one for two trade. F cap staying here. They want to push in the base, possibly getting this mid lane turret. And Few just picked up a blood wings there, so added sustain coming in from this Paramis. And again, minion waves in the middle oh. lane. Glorious pathway already casted as they take down and inhibit their turret. And this is what's hard for Blacklist. They're bursting. They're giving a lot of ultimates to one person, yet they can't take Ogwen down. Oh, do they look for it? Flap TZ. How's the penalty zone? Two turrets in the base down, though. They might just call the retreat as everybody from Blacklist is going to be back up here. So FCAP gets a ton off that first Lord. Two, two inhibitor turrets for a first Lord in exchange for Kyle TZ only. And I believe he doesn't even have a Sky Piercer, so that's really worth it for Falcons. AB Bren after extending the lead to 8.5k gold lead. But so far, there's still a glimpse of hope for Blacklist. Again, uh, what you mentioned. A powerful setup coming in from Haji, paired up with the Frigid Glacier. Yep. They can actually turn things around, but then again, we have to remember, Falcon's AP brand has to revitalize that even few rarely uses. So, so far, Blacklist, they're really going to climb a very, very high mountain just to overcome the Falcon's AP brand. That's what I'm saying. It, for all the Blacklist International agents and fans out there, it's like throwing a Hail Mary. That's what Blacklist International has to do. And, and the great thing about it, to break it down a little bit further, it doesn't only have to be Haji that starts it up. It could actually be Oheb. And we've seen this on base defenses before with a gold lane ruby. You get to a point where, you know, you go in, you grab multiple members with the I'm Offended, and then Haji can get that set with the implosion. And that might be enough crowd control time to, you know, let Exort and MP the King work together with their kits and get favorable team fight going. But again, it's a, it's a wishful, it's a huge wish, it's a huge Hail Mary that they have to make work. And it works better in their base, not around the Lord here. So it'd be better if they actually just give this up, even though they're trying to get some vision. Lord's already going to be secured, though, and they might get forced to fight. They always have to be conscious of that glorious pathway. I, I think Falcon's AB Brand's going to do this by the book. Wait for the Lord instead of just uh, using the glorious pathway to chase members from Blacklist. Because right now, uh, all the flickers for Blacklist side is still up. So, so far, we might see a game-ending clash once this Lord comes. But at the same time, I do agree. Even if the setups coming in from Blacklist connects, is the damage, though, going to be enough? Because at the same time, they don't have the natural gold laner with a, with a marksman looking at the items. It's, it's just the Sea Halberd coming in from the Ruby that's going to be uh, the main damage source from Blacklist. So, so far, I think it's really going to be hard at defense as the Lord marches in, in the middle lane. Well, Who's going to set up first? It's going to be FCAP, but the Glorious Pathway will be casted. It's going to be dropped down. Oheb goes in with the pull. They try to collapse down on Super Marco. Super Marco finally oh. going to get taken down. Frigid Glacier going to be dropped. There's the implosion we were talking about. But do they have enough damage to follow up? They don't as the base is worked on. And FCAP.